So welcome back everyone. We're down here on the Emerald Isle and we are working on our false stack. So you can see Dad's over here. He's working on some layout, drilling out holes, countersinking holes actually, using a, uh, what kind of bit is that, Forgener? Forgener bit. Yeah, so he's using the Forgener bit, countersinking the holes for the bolts and the washers to go into. So that way when you're walking across the deck or using a shovel or anything like that, you don't hit them and trip or hang up your shovel. Pretty annoying when that happens. Yeah, so I think uh, this is a three quarter inch bit. Um, basically fits the size of the washers that we're using. These are 5 16 bolts that we're putting in. And uh, we just have a little depth stop here so we don't go too deep. There's a washer on there just to give it a touch more depth. And um, yeah, it's working good. Starting to get a little bit dull. We've drilled a lot of holes with it now, um, but still working good. Yeah, so I think we briefly went over this material. It's uh, lumber rock. Um, it's a plastic composite with mineral medium, so it won't rot or mildew or anything like that. It's pretty nice to work with so far. Machines nicely, cuts easy. Yeah, it is really nice to work with. So we're basically just uh, laying out our lines on our stringers. Um, these are pre-drilled already. Most of them are lining up pretty good. A few are a little bit off, but it's, it's okay. Um, and uh, just using a piece of scrap 3 8 to kind of be our, our guide here for the widths in between the boards. It's just a touch over that, but this is, gets us in the ballpark. And uh, not really much to show, I guess. I just scribe a line across and, and mark in about an inch and a half from each side and drill the holes and and then uh, come back and drill them the rest of the way through with a quarter inch bit or a 5 16 inch bit I guess and then hit the, the holes with the router real quick um, just stresses them up it gets rid of that sharp edge right there and if anything impacts this it'll just slide right off instead of getting hung up so yeah it's turning out really good um, happy to get these down. You guys probably might notice our nice new bulwarks too that we got in here now. So they're they're all uh, fabbed up. Just need to get them all welded out. Weather's been kind of breezy outside and, and cold and so um, they're not completely welded out but they're all in place. Um, everything's locked down. They're actually pretty solid now so that's really nice yeah yeah so, we're really pleased with how they turned out yeah so things are coming right along um you guys might notice that the hatch doesn't line up over here uh we still need to put a gasket yep. underneath the aluminum hatch and so that's going to raise it up and then any difference that we have we're going to just take a a piece of this uh plastic board and we'll put a, a piece of it around the, the top of the combing and then we can plane it down so we end up with a nice flush deck right here and um, back here we have some thinner material same stuff uh, it's inch thick that we used up forward and that is gonna go chunk it out and same thing that'll come in here and we're gonna just screw this into this piece here so it'll be removable and that'll give us a nice uh, a nice even flush deck. There's just some high spots here from this area where our bolt down holes are so we might have to knock that down a little bit and then we'll just clean these boards down if we need to until we end up with a nice uh, even even surface here and actually the gasket in here is probably most likely going to compress a good half inch too so that'll just take a little bit of time so we'll probably just leave it high for now i kind of forgot that that's what you were doing was putting that course on there yeah instead of leaving it like yeah because this stuff is really slippery fiberglass is pretty slippery unless you put um some no skid on it or like on the fishtail when we redid the deck on there we actually put down a layer of uh gel coat and then sprinkled crushed walnuts on it 
and once it it set up and locked those walnut uh, crushed walnut shells in there then we went over it with another coat of uh, of gel coat and it locked that stuff on there and it was really really grippy like industrial sandpaper practically and uh, it worked great but uh, before that um, when it's just bare it's extremely slippery especially if you get a little bit of snow a little bit of powder on there or ice so that's that's how we uh, we're gonna deal with this so we don't have that slipping hazard so what you doing so I am getting the holes drilled I guess counterboard basically getting them aligned with these stringers it's a three-quarter inch and it fits uh, washer size for our 516 bolts so that's kind of my task so I'm just measuring in so we keep a kind of an even line of bolts on the end sometimes that are off a little bit on these stringers but we just kind of redrill them it's not that big of a deal on that so appearance is more important and uh, just measuring about an inch and a half from each side and then I use my Forgener bit here it's got a, a bit stop right here to control my depth and just a washer on there is an extra spacer and just come in and I have to stop and clean all the junk out of it because it loads it up it doesn't have any space for the swarf to come out because it's blocked by that washer but that's okay So we just do that, come over to the next one. Do the same thing. And just kind of double check. Now that's ready for it to be drilled out with a 5 16 bit. And Matt's coming in and doing that. And then he'll hit these real quick with the router with just an eighth inch round over. And it just gives it a nice little chamfer like that. It's sort of the sharp edge and makes it nice and smooth. It'll keep junk from snagging on there. And uh, anything sliding over it will just pass right over that as opposed to maybe jamming in there and tearing up the, the deck material. So that's just kind of the first step there. And then once he gets these ends bolted in, then I come back in down the center and I'll line these up and drill those out. Same thing. Um, this is about a 3 8 inch gap, just slightly over. This is 3 8 inch material here. So it's just a hair over 3 8 inch. So this works really good just to kind of check our spacing. And uh, all these stringers were drilled out beforehand. We just had a piece of aluminum with um, all the holes drilled in the appropriate si spots. So primarily to line up the stringers that kind or the stanchions that, that elevate the stringers off the deck. And um, they've been pretty accurate. Like I said, once in a while they're off a little bit, but you just hit it with the bit and open it up and it's fine. And um, this is our finished result. We've got uh, extremely rigid deck now um, the cracks in it will allow all the salt water any water that comes on deck um, all the gurry from cleaning fish and slime and bleeding them can all pass right through these deck boards and underneath and out through the scuppers so it creates a really nice clean space um, it's pretty grippy stuff right now it's a little bit slippery in places but it's just from all the all the swarf and all the the cuttings and stuff from the stuff uh, once it's all cleaned off it's it's really grippy well that's going to make a huge difference even for when the water washes up through the scuppers huh when you're on the yeah. water yeah and the deck is a lot more comfortable this this deck is uh the fiberglass deck was actually really quite slippery so we would have needed to put some kind of no skid or some kind of coating on it so um we weren't falling down but also uh there's a lot of crown on the deck particularly up here along the rail which made it very uncomfortable to stand there um you're always kind of like just tipping out and because of the crown of the deck so this is 
pretty flat. There's a tiny bit of crown, but it's pretty flat because all the water just drains through the, the uh, gaps in the boards anyways. So the crown isn't really that important, as important on a false deck. Um, the crown underneath the deck is important to help shed the water. So yeah, that's kind of the first step. All right, what you got going on, Matt? Well, this is next step in the process. Uh, Dad countersunk out these holes. And after that, I come in with my 5 16 bit and poke a hole through them. Um, we'll make sure that there are three points uh, pinned first. So we'll do the two ends first and then do a middle one because these boards will slide around or bend around pretty easy. So you want them good and fastened. You don't want to go too crazy drilling out holes. And so what I'll do is I'll drill out one of these on each of the stringers, get a bolt in, and then I'll come back through and hit the rest of the holes. So anyway, drill out this hole here. It goes through the deck board material and then I just kind of nip at the uh, laminate here so it doesn't try and pull my bit off to the side. If I happen to hit a hole on the side, it'll try and drag it over and chowder out some of the uh, board there. So I just kind of nip at it with the drill bit there. <laughs> and after that, uh, you can see these edges are pretty sharp from the Forstner bit. I'll come through with a eighth inch uh, round over bit on my router here. My hearing protection on because this thing's super loud. And I'll just give it a quick round over. And you can see how nice and smooth that makes it. Doesn't catch up on shovels or anything like that. It won't chip off or make any ugly gouges if something catches it. Or it may still gouge it, but not as noticeable, I don't think. So then after that, uh, I'll put the bolt in. I need a shorty. Shorty. So, got the washers here, and you can see they just slide in very nicely into the bottom of that countersink socket. Put your bolt in, and just I reach underneath here and thread it on like so. Going for a dual socket approach here just because um, socket lets you reach up underneath the laminate. That way you can get a wrench up there very easily. So, sockets, tighten her down. Use your finger to see that the nylock engaged. And it did, and that's about it for my part. Thankfully, I have a, a handy prepper guy over here for my fasteners because it's actually quite a tedious process, I find, having to get up and go over the table and all that jazz. So, pass you over to T. Now, Tristan, that's me. You got a big job here. Yeah, so I'm just the hardware prepper guy. I got short bolts in this cut. I got longer bolts in this one. And I got nuts and washers. And I just prep the bolts by smearing some anti-seize schmoo on them. Get a nice even layer so they don't like seize up when they're put in. Keeps it from getting all rusty and stuck, huh? Yeah, that'd be bad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I just hand them to Matt whenever he's ready so he doesn't have to get up. Yeah, good teamwork, guys. You guys are doing a wonderful job. Mom's proud. Proud no. of you guys. Proud. It's good. <laughs> 
Sure is nice walking on, that's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> So how do you keep the deck so clean? Oh, during this process, from all the shavings and dust and everything, all our scuppers are plugged up right now. Um, number one, to help keep heat in here, and also to prevent all this dust and you know debris that we generate during this project from actually ending up in the environment. There's uh, just a, a ton, a ton of stuff down here. It's just thick now. Aluminum and sawdust and plastic and yeah so uh when we finish up here we'll just take our air hose and we'll just blow it all against the side right here um these boards on the end will be the last ones to go in and we actually have to wait until we get all this stuff welded out before we put in these last boards anyways and at that time we'll just blow it all over to the side of the bulwarks right there and then we can gather it up and and uh get the big chunks with the with the uh broom and vacuum up the rest and that way we kind of try to do our part and keeping all that stuff going into the environment as best as we can anyways. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, it's, it's amazing how much um, debris and, and stuff you generate during a project like this. And so when you said you weren't gonna put the other outside boards on, is that's because you're gonna be welding and you don't wanna melt yeah, it? These last couple of three in here. We'll get them all fit up and everything, but uh, we'll need to remove them when we weld this stuff out. I actually have gotten some, some welding splatter on these boards when I was doing some of the stanchions and I had some of the boards next to it. You could see where it leave little, little black marks, but it didn't like melt in. Like you think it would? Like it yeah, would like, on, like plastic. on plastic, yeah. So that was uh, kind of a nice thing, but we're not gonna press our luck on it. Yeah. Last thing we want is a bunch of hot globs of aluminum falling on here and uglifying our work. Looks good and it's comfortable to walk on. Yeah. It's warm too. It's a lot warmer than yeah. the aluminum and even the fiberglass. You can tell a difference. Probably can't really hear, but it's pouring out. Got a storm rolling in southeasterly, so that tends to bring a lot of rain. Not very much fun to work in. Yeah, so it's nasty out. So for now, we're back on the inside casts. Today's is getting these uh, posts attached to our aft hatch cover here. So, because we can't really bolt these through our hatch, um, our plan is just to uh, drill and tap the fiberglass. It's pretty thick, um, and I wanna guess that it's probably at least a 3 8 inch thickness on that. Yeah, I'd say at least that, for yeah. sure. Because the original stuff was close to a quarter, wasn't it? Yep. So yeah, so there's probably a, a solid 3 8 glass here. Um, Fiberglass actually caps pretty well and it, it holds fast as well. Um, we've put like, oh, just regular screws into it before and you gotta be pretty careful to, to not twist them off in the fiberglass because it's, uh, it's very strong. So we'll just go ahead and just use a regular machine cap and uh, 5 16 bolt, same as the rest and it'll all match up really nice. So these uh, bolts will end up you know coming in right about here which is actually still on the the flange part of this uh, we'll put 5200 on there anyways and then we'll also have a, a, a string of screws down the center of this i don't really foresee any problem we'll just seal them up good maybe when we get a chance we'll come back and and pour the bolts and tap them at some point we're going to probably put just a regular aluminum patch in here too so you don't have to lift off this whole thing to get into the stitch hole so this is kind of primarily for like ice and bait when we're um fishing cod or halibut this is where we'll be storing like our bait for the trip things like that so if you have just a freeman hatch like that it's easy to, to open up and pop down there as opposed to unbolting this and taking it off 
So these little holes right here with the line going through it, this is actually where the bolts go through and bolt into a stainless mount that's on the inside of the hatch combing so we can bolt this down securely, prevent it from ever coming off in rough weather or just lifting up and having water get in there. And that's kind of what I was talking about as far as using this for a bait hold is that you'll have to take those off every time you need to get down there. So at some point we'll put just a small removable hatch like that in here so we can jump in and out throughout the day if we need bait. So yeah, uh, I think we got about eight of these boards here. Um, we'll just give them the exact same gap as this way. We'll work our way from the outside in and then the center boards might need a little bit of a trim to fit, but uh, it should come out pretty nice, I think. Yesterday I had to take the planer uh, to these. That's why you see some raw glass here. Grab that little uh, container gel coat from home slather it on here. Um, reason for that is uh, when I when we laid up this top uh, lamb that we just brought it over and integrated it into these sockets here so it ended up really crowded here probably a quarter inch or so and so we just took the planer to that yesterday and took it down and yeah just right now. Yeah much better fit and uh, we'll put 5200 underneath all of these and so that'll fill any any kind of gaps and and uh, once it's bolted down, it'll prevent it from wobbling. So, uh, I, I guess we'll just split the difference on these other, on the plank here, huh? Yeah. For the center bolt? I think so. Probably just, yeah, right down the middle. Just fine. Should be good, huh? Mm -hmm. 44 and a half. 21 and a quarter, yeah? No, That's 22 and a quarter. Well, I finally had to switch out my bit the other day. That other one was getting a little dull. I think we got, oh, 400 plus holes in this deck now, I guess. So, got some pretty good mileage out of it. Not sure if this first string will uh, make it. Well, I don't think it will over there for over sure. Over here won't. Yeah. So we'll just put in a couple of dummy ones here, so it looks good. Next thing is just to get these gapped out and uh, drill a few holes and secure them. I think that is going to be just very nice. Very nice indeed. Yeah. Good, huh? 
think it's good. Okay, so we got it all drilled out. Got the glass patch cover tap for all the fasteners, except for obviously these two center ones here. Like we mentioned, you have to take them home and take off three eighths uh, from either side of them. And that'll just to be to get our gap in the center there center and off one side. So get that uh, trimmed down a little bit in the back and then we can drill out the rest of the holes. Turned out really good. Yeah, very nice. That went quickly and worked out good. Um, we weren't really sure exactly what we were going to do at first, but turned out there was just enough room on the ends just to more or less match the the length, all these end pieces kind of vary, but <clears throat> uh, inch and a half on these ones, I think those ones are two inches. So we just matched them with this uh, skinny one here. So that turned out good. Like I said, there's just enough room there to match it up. So that was nice. And here we are. So I guess the last part aside from that is uh, this back area here for now. We might have gone over it, I'm not sure, but our plan at the moment is to uh, get a removable um, piece. Just yeah. Frame <clears throat> piece like you, yeah, you so see it pretty often. Our thoughts are that this one will go in here, we'll trim off these extra nubs, same on that side. And this will be actually part of the, the hatch that's removable. The thing is that these need to, to come off because our fuel fills are right here. Otherwise, there's just no way to get in there without like cutting an access hole in here, which is pretty ugly looking. So I think our best bet is gonna be to have these two boards here that create the frame. And so when it sits down, you know, these will uh, set our height and keep it even with the rest of the deck. And then we'll just have runners underneath here that are bolted into here and then the rest of our planks can screw into these and we just won't use this part here other than just to uh, provide support for the hatch and that should work out real good these might end up just being full lengths to go all the way down to the deck um, that way it'll just help support the weight of it and it'll be heavy enough that it shouldn't lift out if, if it gets rough out. But yeah. We'll uh, also leave probably the four bolts on these ones each side or at least one on each one to help pin it in and that'll kind of center it and make it pretty hard to come out because they'll, they'll bind up unless you just pick it up straight. So that should be fine like that. Super happy with how this deck turned out. Yeah it's um, really it's so nice to walk on. It's really solid and like it doesn't even move. Yeah, and it's so comfortable now, just having a nice, smooth, flat deck. I think next on the agenda is to take our corner piece. I better move these before I forget about them because they're quite slippery. Kind of get launched up in space. Yeah, that would hurt. 